In this part of the photography review show, we're going to be looking at photographers with a mixed style of photography. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of our photography review show. For those who don't know me, my name is Jacob Bors. I'm a professional photographer based in West Sussex here in the south of England. And for the last two or three years, I've been reviewing photos of my colleagues and friends. And that's why we decided here at The Clever Photographer that that's what we're gonna do for our photography community. It's been super successful. So over the last several weeks, we actually received many, many photos from many, many photographers and we're doing super well. And this is the reason why we now have to divide the show between the three different parts focusing on different styles of photography. Also, what we have to do quite often is to take the pictures you send us and choose two or three of the best ones and review them because the time doesn't allow us to review all of the photos. But either way, it's a lot of fun and we really enjoy doing it. Now, before we're gonna jump into the reviews, we have few things to go through. First of all, there is still standing the overall rating we share at the end of each of the photographer. We're giving a stars from one star to five stars. And one star basically means going back to the basics, starting from the beginning. And then five star means you are ready to be shared, sold and hired. And uh, the pictures are that good. So uh, that adding lots of new fun to the actual photography review. Also, we have to thank again, Clever Photographer for putting us on. All the tools are there. Make sure you head to their website cleverphotographer.com and check out uh, some of the tools I created there like uh, Photoshop brushes, Lightroom brushes, skies, presets and lots of other things. Finally, as always, we want to ask you to make sure that you like, subscribe and comment under this video so we can continue doing this show. And to finish it off, again, there is a set of news and uh, basically it's something really exciting, something what we were planning to do for quite a few weeks now and we're going to start from this week. So in order to put everything together and in one place, uh, instead of sharing at the Facebook and YouTube, we decided that we're going to create a Facebook group. The Facebook group is called Clever Photographer Academy and that's basically going to bring all of this together and hopefully allow us to spend more time with the community of photographers who are willing to learn more and improve their photography. So starting from today, you can head to Facebook, uh, look for Clever Photographer Academy group. Uh, make sure you hit there a button to join. You will fill up a little questionnaire and then you will be allowed in. And the whole idea of this group is to share your photos and receive a feedback on them even throughout the week rather than just on these Mondays. Also, another thing is to bring a picture you are not sure what to do with, you're not sure about how to edit it or what went wrong, and we will try to help you there on this. And of course, ask questions. So it's gonna be a lot of fun and it's definitely something uh, what you should do. So again, head to the Facebook, look for Clever Photographer Academy and join us there because we're just starting and usually these things are even more fun when you start on the beginning and when you really set yourself in. And that brings us nicely together with the page we have at Clever Photographer. The address is cleverphotographer.com slash review. And that will be the hub of all the review shows. You will see the plan there, the program, uh, usually for four or five weeks ahead, you will be able to send us pictures for any of the five weeks. You will be able to see what we're doing and find out more information there. So usually the journey will start from the cleverphotographer.com slash review. That's where you will be able to find the Facebook group. That's where you will be able to find the dates. And that's where we'll be able to find the places where you can share your photos and receive even more feedback. So lots of excitement stuff heading our way. We are super excited to bring this again a little bit further and have even more fun with you guys. But now without any further ado, let's jump straight into it and start with the actual reviews. And now it's time for the photographers that send us kind of mix of uh, different styles of photography. So obviously when we have a photographers who send us one kind, we kind of slot them in their uh, slots like landscape photographers. But when you send us a uh, different things, we usually put them in this part where we focus on the mixed team photographers. And that's what we're going to do now. So uh, we're going to start with Sherry and we have uh, two pictures um, right here. So we have uh, two pictures here. One is a kind of, bird here uh like an eagle eating something and then we have a lady in actual salon so let's talk about first impression uh, this is a very nice and interesting picture obviously going towards kind of boudoir feel um i'm not 100 percent sure about the crop i think if there would be a little bit more space around her including the shirt and everything 
it would make it a little bit more interesting. And I also think that the face is a little bit blurry, which could be uh, because of the JPEG compression. Uh, let's have a look if we have any details here. Um, and it's also it doesn't help that it's really uh, small the picture. So for next time, Sherry, if you send us pictures, make sure they are a little bit bigger so we can judge more the quality and the technical part of it. But otherwise, interesting picture. And then the eagle itself, I'm not 100% sure about the picture, to be honest. It's stunning capture, obviously 320 millimeters. You have a lovely lens to do it, but then it's all cropped. And I think when you get a chance to photograph something like an eagle, something like this, it's always a shame that we don't get it in their fuel beauty. I think there's a huge amount of empty space. Also, I can see some noise, which is quite interesting by using, when you use um, 100 ISO, it would be interesting why you're getting this noise, maybe because of um, the compression and how you push the picture. But yeah, um, although I love eagles and wildlife photography in overall, I think this one, um, I'm not 100% sure. Let's talk about technical point of view. So technically, um, obviously we talk in low light situation, uh, although the composition interesting, I think you lost a little bit of a sharpness on a face. I see more sharpness on her actual dress and the hand than in a face, which I think is uh, a little bit of a shame. Uh, yes, there will be some noise, which is quite natural for uh, this low light. You went for 2200. Um, to be honest, depending on your camera, you're using Nikon D7000 and there will be noise uh, if you want to reduce the noise and not use really flash or other uh, kind of pictures, you would be looking for faster lens, something what can do maybe f1 point something. Um, and you would be looking for maybe better camera if you would want to reduce the noise, which so for example, I have a Sony a7R uh, 4 and I can go up to 2,500 and pretty much get no noise or noise, which is very acceptable. Where in your case, there are parts which there is not much noise, obviously the darker one, but then her whole body is covered with noise, which I think is really shame. Also because it's mixture of color and um, kind of high frequency noise and it's not very pleasant for her. So that's a little bit of a shame. Although I don't think the light is quite interesting, but more on a harsh side from one side. So I think there is a heavy, heavy, shadows happening here it's still interesting lighting moving on the guy here itself lovely capture everything is sharp uh, it's a nice light um, i can't really add obviously there is this pose here which i assume the bird would be sitting on um, but i think it's uh, technically quite nice quite well done actually i can't add much here so uh, technically well done but then talk about the artistic feel um this is a picture I would like to see as a part of the series. I would like to see four or five pictures of this lady in her dress with the tattoos and being dressed like this, and it would make complete sense. When it's a picture just like this, it's a little bit on the edge of being provocative, um, and it's just kind of missing the other pictures to understand more the story of it. And again, artistically, I think it's a shame that it's actually missing part of the shirt. I think if you would get a little bit uh, further from the model and have more space on each side it would help better even more so because you have that little bit of a space here on the side and you're missing the space here maybe for the model to put a little bit closer the shirt would also be one solution um, I think the pose itself um, although it's interesting uh, I think maybe I would be looking for kind of boudoir or 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 or, or kind of this kind of this kind of fashion model poses to see how you can use them. Uh, not long time ago, I actually saw a whole guide on how to pose on these kind of bar stools. And you can just go and Google it, uh, boudoir pose, poses on bar stool. And there was lots of really nice and interesting uh, ideas there. So something to look for. Uh, also, what did I wanted to say? Um, I actually saw quite nice workshop uh, on creative life. Let me just show you. It's right here and it's actually for boudoir photography it costs 14 dollars and actually uh, i have a friend who done it and he was quite happy with it so maybe something you should go for and look for so it's done by christa mella uh, for 14 dollars you can't really lose much and maybe it will give you some inspiration for the future uh, so artistically then going back to the bird again i'm just not sure about the 
crop although it's a lovely capture i'm sure you were really happy with it i think there is way too much space with it i think there is way too much of the bird missing and even though it's technically really difficult to capture this with the bird eating it's like a hidden miss a little bit um going to the post processing it's quite nicely done i would be wondering if you can do a little bit different crop uh, since we this is all we have maybe just something like this to avoid that much of empty space on the side um let's see what was the white balance originally something like this i don't know if maybe black and white wouldn't help a little bit i'm not crazy about it neither uh, maybe to do try to see if you can replace this the background a little bit with something just to make it more interesting maybe with some texture um, is something what i'll be looking at post processing on this one um, quite nicely done it's quite natural um, i don't think it takes any way anything away from the woman um, so light and see how you could create less harshness on her side posing i think is another thing uh, make sure to check out for the uh, for the sharpness on the face and then look out for the noise would be my suggestion sherry for those two i'm gonna give it two stars today i think um you heading there however there is still a bit to be done and uh, as i say maybe check out this class i just showed you on a creative uh, i think it will be helpful or look around and try to get inspired by others um out of the two both nice captures technically quite complicated but uh, still little bit of work to be done if you want make sure to read you join us on a facebook at clever photographer academy group where we can talk more about it throughout the week and uh, we can look at more of your pictures most importantly send us more of your pictures in the future we can't wait to see them moving on the next photographer we have the uh, david david goodman send us two pictures david uh, two different pictures this is almost kind of macro photography looking at this picture with the leaves and uh, so on and then looking inside with a lovely window and a kind of old almost like a museum looking interior uh, david talking about first impression i prefer this one and yeah, let me see i think both of them just as a suggestion for future and that's not just for you it's for anybody anytime you send your pictures for reviews try to stay away from watermark signatures and frames and that's saying all you want is the person who reviewing the photos is to focus on your photos and all these three things i just mentioned watermark signatures and frames take the attention away for somebody like me you start to wonder why why white frame why do you use this certain font for the pic signature and so on so just as a su suggestion you want that person you send the pictures to focusing only on your art so just for the future but talking about two of them uh, this one is my favorite out of two, the two. I think it's very interesting. It's very interesting work with the actual light. And uh, it's a lovely scene. Nothing to add there. I, I like the first impression on this one. On this one, uh, it's maybe to do with that with over the last two months, I saw tens or maybe hundreds of macro photos. And uh, even though technically it's quite well done, it's definitely not one of my favorite i think with macro photography that can be a lot done but this is not the most nicest subject for me i think it's gonna burn here and it's getting old i think the crop also is a little bit of a tight on one side and um i'm not sure about it i, I saw nicer macro photography in past but this one i really like so let's talk about it from the technical point of view you have a nice blurred background which to be honest looking at the edges like this black here and this kind of leaks here i'm not sure if the background was here like this or if, if you have changed it let's have a look if we have any camera details f 4.0 39 millimeters mm, maybe the background was like that either way um it technically it's quite kind of nicely done as i always say with macro photography the trend now is to pick your main element your main subject which could be flower or leaf or plant like this or b and make sure that the whole subject is in focus i think in past lots of photographers used to focus only on a part of the main subject so let's say you have a like a flower and really only small part of the flower is in focus and everything else was blurry and there was this all blurry and too much of the blur and macro photography yeah it's working with the kind of um, depth of field but a little bit with sense not too much of a blur which in your case it works quite well it's nice 
mixture of some kind of detail and some kind of bouquet together with the actual picture so it's nicely done so technically i don't really actually have much it's nicely sharp although there are bits and pieces here and here which are blurry but in overall it's nicely done it's not the most nicest light i ever seen in my life but it's kind of decent it's diffuse at least you don't have any hard shadows so it's quite well done on this one what did you use again the same camera uh, you have a high iso so obviously if we would probably bring out the shadows we could see maybe some noise in them but because you haven't brought them out it works much better in this case um f9 one eightieth of a second with 18 millimeters yeah lovely capture technically well capture i like how your foreground is nice and sharp all the way through we can see the details outside which is very important i think it adds even more to the actual story and it's nicely done so technically both of them nothing much i would add artistically um oh so on this one again i think it's a choice of subject i think technically you have it quite nailed but there must be much nicer flowers and plants which you would share with us um you kind of talking uh, and coming to 2021 2022 uh, i think the main thing will be looking for kind of positive things and things growing and so on and uh, i think it would be nicer to some find some kind of nice flower which is blooming or green leaves or leaves which have like a different colors and so on just Try to focus on that um, and then when you capture it uh, make sure you get more space on the side so the flower feel nice and free um, and it's just gonna work out on this one composition it's really nice it's centered i think it's a little bit tilting one way which can be probably really easily fixed in geometry here um let's see well that didn't help um so you could maybe just do something like this and Again, this, and I think we're almost there. Yep, something like this, just to kind of get the whole uh, thing a little bit more straight. But that's just my old interior design days, which kind of uh, tells me to do that. You wouldn't have to. You could also just leave it the way it was. But um, it's quite nice like this. You could obviously crop it a little bit more to get the window straight in the center. You would lose a little bit of the foreground, but uh, maybe something like this and uh, now we are really talking but still very very lovely uh, clear message nicely executed uh, low light situation well done great picture post-processing wise um, let's see what we do in black and white um, you could do a little bit more in black and white with this I think if you would push the contrast um, let's see if we can maybe add a little bit darkness at the back uh, to create some like a heavy contrast in between uh, that way we don't really worry about the burn you could, because you can't see them. We could add some clarity if we find it here to get maybe something like this and then really work on it locally with heavy dodge and burn to maybe see if you can do something like this and really kind of push it and see yeah, something like this here. There you go. Uh, you could also add a little bit of a darks in the kind of area here puff, and maybe do a little bit stronger vignette and there you go and you have maybe something interesting so this would be what i would do with this one and with this one i think it works perfectly fine like this i would maybe add a little bit more line in the kind of foreground here uh just would do this um, also i think this one would look really really nice in black and white without any doubt it's really lovely you could just bring down the clarity and get a little bit more glow outside and you know what this is a picture for postcard I really really love it David thank you very much so uh, in overall uh, David because of the low light situation how you handle it and because of your technical skill on the actual macro photography I'm gonna give you three I think you well done on track uh, with your photography I think you know what you're doing uh, I think this picture is great this one would be heading for four star for me I think this is something you could easily put on your portfolio this one not there yet it's more like two so i think to get a three uh david well done thank you very much for joining us send us more pictures in the future and if you want and if you want to talk to us more about photography throughout the week head to clever photographer academy on facebook group and uh, come and join us we can talk more photography and share more pictures throughout the week let's jump on the next photographer dennis dennis we have a uh, two pictures from you we have this bird on the beach and 
Uh, I'm assuming it's like a bridge, bridge building. So let's jump into it. Uh, first impression, the bird seems to be really cropped. So it's, uh, I see some, it's not very sharp. There is more sharpness on the actual sand. And it seems to be cropped. Let's have a look just before, no details there. Okay, so it's a bird walking. At least you have the first bird. There is some kind of fish here jumping. Um, and I kind of like it, don't like it. Uh, we'll talk about it more throughout, although it's a very, very nice capture. Um, on this one, not crazy about it. Although it's nice and saturated, I don't really mind that it's uh, midday, um, but I'm there is lots happening and I'm confused with what's the main subject. If the main subject is the building, then the trees shouldn't need to be there. If the main subjects are the trees, then the building is really distracting. And I think that's where it gets really in balance, Dennis. So if you were going for the building, I would maybe go on the top, try to get the leading line towards the building using the road and photograph that. If you were going for the trees, there must be much better captures for the trees. But I assume it's the actual building here and the composition just really don't work for me looking at it straight from the beginning. But let's jump to the technical point of view. So technically, uh, although it's really not easy to capture a bird uh, sharp like this, I think you've done very well. Um, it's a little bit blurry and that could be because of the compression. What quality did you send us? 1000 on 810. If you send us more pictures in the future, make sure that they are in a little bit better condition. I think that would be really helpful. Although there are some details, I think it would be sharper and you can definitely see that this foreground is sharper than the bird itself. Um, I think the time of the day or light isn't great neither. I think the white balance, uh, I think this is what I don't like on it. I like the capture of the bird. I think it's stunning, but I don't like the light. I think it's uh, very kind of grayish. I think maybe it would look better black and white. And second thing I don't like is the foreground, but we'll talk about it in artistic field. But in technical point of view, I think it's a poor light. Uh, it's very diffused. And uh, I think it's touch blurry. And that could be because maybe you were wider with your camera and you cropped it a lot, or maybe you were not fully focused with your camera on the bird. Depends. Moving on this one. So um, technically, talking technically, I think it's actually well captured. You know, it's... Uh, all is sharp, uh, even your leaves and trees. Uh, the light is quite decent. Again, as I say, in a scene like this, I don't mind that it's midday because there are some uh, textures in the sky. So it's not just blue. Uh, the sun isn't too harsh. So uh, the exposure is quite well done. So technically, uh, then is, this one is well done. But then when we talk about the artistic feel, it's super confusing. You know, if, the if you would maybe crop a little bit closer, let's say we would do something like this. Uh, not the crop. Um, so you would use the trees like a kind of frame in frame composition. Then maybe we could like a, do something about it, but then the building isn't really inside of the frame and it gets really confusing. So, um, I think composition wise also it's kind of tilting on one side. Um, not for me, I'm not, not crazy about it again, maybe to see if you can use the pond at some kind of reflection, but what I would do, I would climb on the road and see if I can use the road as a leading line towards the actual building. That would be my suggestion. Uh, because again, what's the main subject here? You have to decide and then you have to follow the main subject. And uh, anytime I get to something like this, it's really important to walk all the way around, uh, check which views you like the most, and then make sure the height is right as well. Take the pictures and see home. Then is on this one, composition wise, I think, um, there is too much of this foreground, which is really distracting because it's high frequency. Well, it's messy, but in photography, we call it something what we call high frequency foreground element. And it's basically something what really distract human eyes. So somebody who don't understand photography, still when he looks at it and see this, uh, will get really distracted really easily. So um, I would try to crop that away. That would be my suggestion. Maybe do something like this. And suddenly we have quite nice picture. The birds still have a place to walk to and it does something different. So out of the two, definitely I prefer this one. I think it's a lovely attempt to capture this bird. He's there in all glory. There's the fish uh, jumping and everything is happening. But when we turn it to post-processing, I think what I would do with this one, I would definitely turn it to black and white and see how I can create some kind of contrast. And that's to do with the fact that I don't really like um, the white balance on it. Uh, the black and white looks okay, half decent. But if I reset it, 
and then group it again because I think the foreground is really distracting. Um, it's just, let's see if what, um, this was probably the original white balance. Yeah, the black and white would be the way to go. Um, see if you can add some vignette, maybe a little bit of a clarity, vignette to close it. Also, um, maybe do some dodge and burn, add kind of brightness to the brighter part of the bird and add darker parts to the actual photo somewhere here and see if that would maybe help, you know, something like this. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, you could do something like this just for a kind of future and see. But in overall, Denise, thank you very much for sending us your pictures. Overall rating, I would give you today two, two stars. You getting there definitely. I think um, you have the right ideas of your compositions. I think you have uh, you actually very good at setting up your camera to get the pictures sharp. I think uh, really to finish it off, more better compositions. Think about it a little further. Move more around the subject and kind of start to see. Another good idea is to go and get inspired by other photographers and see what they're doing. Sometimes even googling the spots where you're heading. And by looking at other people's work, you get inspired, try to copy it and then create your own style. And you can also do that in our new group at Clever Photographer Academy. Uh, head to the Facebook, join us and talk about the photography throughout the week. Dennis, I hope you send us more pictures in the future. In the meantime, thank you very much. Next photographer, Einar. Einar. Um, so we have uh, five pictures here. Uh, three pictures of a church and then two pictures from actual inside of the church. So let's talk about them. Let's jump straight into it. I know, um, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Uh, there's just lots of names. Some of them are a bit foreign for me, but I'll try my best. So I will say Einar. So, Einar, so we have a uh, beautiful pictures of the church and I have to say those two are my favorite. This one, uh, because of this element here, I'm not 100% crazy about it. Then we have a two pictures from the inside, which are actually quite nicely captured. Although the overall problem across the pictures is the noise, not as much on this one. Let's have a look if we have details because your ISO is 200 here. And then we move here and suddenly we are 3200, which I don't understand uh, why at this time of the day with this lighting, you need to have this ISO so high. Uh, Similarly on this one, look how much noise, 3,200. I mean, this should be ISO 100, F9, uh, 7.18, uh, and then you can have much uh, slower shutter speed and it would look great, but you would avoid so much noise that look, when I look at this person, you can't even see who it is, what it is. So really lots of noise. I understand why you're going for the ISO here inside with a low light situation, but again, there is so much noise here, 3200 with the Nikon D500 that it's almost unwatchable. Maybe if it would be smaller, it would help, but noise is the main problem. So to be honest, I think your composition across the pictures are great, but the technical part of the thing is really not sorted there. So uh, let's talk about uh, technical. I'm not gonna talk about each of them pictures. Uh, but uh, let's talk about this one because it doesn't um, have the issue with the ISO. So obviously the setting was right here. You were on 200. Um, uh, Einar, just, just to kind of explain, the lower the ISO and the golden point is 100, the lower it is, less noise it gives you on the camera. So this is 200. So it will give you a little bit of a noise, but nowhere near as 3200. 3200, look at the noise here. Look at the noise here. 3,200 and look at the noise here. There's pretty much none, there's a little bit. So you just to remember, the lower the ISO towards 100, the better the quality of the picture, the less noise as well. Um, so on this one, so technically this one is sharp. Um, it's a little bit overexposed on this part of the photo. We're starting to lose the detail. You, as you can see, there's probably sun was probably here. You get some blue here, but you're starting to lose um, the detail here. And when I go, let's see, uh, you can see it. When I touch the whites, you can see everything what's not black is kind of a little bit overexposed. But still, it's this one, technically, when it comes to ISO, is the best. 
um, then this one again the sharpness is right uh, everything is right it's nice time of the day uh, you know you have some nice texture in the sky there is no harsh shadows it's lovely capture just the noise uh, again this one there is the sun coming but just the noise really takes away and it's really 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 shame uh, and I think technically this is nicely done as well you have the foreground element although this poster takes away a little bit but you have the lady watching in and then you have the leading line and it works really nice here but the noise takes away again um, and what's the lens you're using just have to check 16 millimeters to 80 f point f 2.8 with that so fast um, lens you shouldn't have to use such a high ISO um, but yep that's what it is okay uh, composition wise love it except this um, something what we call in landscape photography a uh, strong confusing foreground element and it's usually cars lamps trees people buildings which appear on the sides of the picture and don't really have the origin of them so for example this tree which doesn't really belong there it cover parts of the building take the attention away so i think it's a little bit of a shame and that's the only mistake on this picture this one great composition a lovely frame created by the two trees the leading line with the wall really nicely done this one as well nice church placed in the right part of the photo with the sun poking behind it lovely capture again here composition wise uh, nicely done kind of frame in frame you could go probably a little bit more straight um, which can be done in geometry and just click on auto and get something like this lovely capture uh, this one again lovely capture foreground element with the person with the people it really creates night atmosphere um, so uh, I think composition you do super well in uh, post processing i'm not gonna add much i think it all looks very natural uh, i think this ones are a little bit pushed with the shadows i think you could have easily uh, left meter more imagination so by kind of bringing down a little bit of the exposure and the shadows you would also get less noise uh, it's no problem that they are kind of darker part it creates a little bit more contrast and it's a bit nicer um, I think your pictures are looking natural. I think the highlights and shadows, um, except the interior, are quite, done quite well. So, Einar, because of the ISO, I'm going to have to give you two stars today. Otherwise, it would be solid three, uh, well on track, I think. And I think the reason being is that your composition is great, your sharpness is great, but the ISO is something what you really need to look at and fix. And if you want to help with that, make sure you join us at our new Facebook group, Clever Photographer Academy. Come and join us there and we'll be happy to help or look at more of your pictures and give you some hints of how you can do that. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Send us more pictures in the future. We can't wait to see them. Moving for the final photographer. No, not yet. One, two more. So Evgeny, first of all, uh, thank you again for sending us your photos. Evgeny sends us pictures every week and we're always super happy to see them. And we have a five pictures. So let's have a look which we're going to review today. So I really like this one. Not crazy about this one. Um, this one definitely not people and it's kind of leaning so we're not going to look at this one today and not going to look at this one i think parts are blurry and covered and again the message is not very clear so let's talk about those three uh first impression evgeny um so this one loving it i think i would get a little bit closer i think um if we would crop it a little bit more to something like this and really make sure that the uh, opera is the main subject would help but in overall it's a right time of the day it's nice composition in between and well done on this one this one it's an interesting scene uh, and the human in some way actually adds sense of the size of the waves so it works quite well and it's something a little bit different so I quite like it and this one, I love the sun. I quite like the leading line. Um, I think shame for the people. You know, I'm not a huge fan of the people uh, on a picture. I think it's good to take a time and try to kind of pick up a spot when you don't need to have them. But in overall, it, quite, it works quite well. Um, out of the three, this one is definitely my favorite. Talking about technical uh, point of view, Evgeny, I think this one is well captured. Right time of the day, good exposure, good light. 
uh, and everything is sharp all the way through. As always, you're using Pentax, F8, ISO 400. Again, uh, interesting to know if you're using tripod, um, because I think it would be definitely good if you could bring your ISO down to 100. Maybe set it to aperture priority, F7, F8, F9, F11, whatever you want. Put your camera on a tripod and then let uh, and then bring your exposure down to whatever it needs to come down and you will have a lovely picture you will have them much more clean and you will lose some of the noise you get with these high high isos uh moving on this one technically well captured obviously um it's not kind of sunset view uh there is no sky so it kind of doesn't add as much there but everything is sharp um there is a lovely movement and texture in the sky it's not too sharp so well done on that one and this one light time of the day good exposure um, everything is sharp there uh, so technically good light technically well done there let's talk about composition and artistic feel um, artistically I really like this one I think the main subject is definitely the um, Sydney Opera I think kind of panoramatic crop like 16 on 9 would work a little bit better here and again, like I was saying earlier, I would really crop it to something like this because the Sydney Opera is the main subject here, right? It's not the whole bridge. The bridge is nice, but it's not really that interesting. This is the part which is much more interesting. That would be me. But in overall, artistically, I quite like it. I think it's a great idea. Lovely uh, kind of placement of the Sydney Opera between the pillars. Well done on there. This one, artistically interesting, quite nice leading line created by the coast. The human being, the kind of ratio for the size of the coast and the waves, quite work here. And well done on that. And finally, this one, as much as technically is done well, you have your leading line, you have your glow, you have the right time of the day. It's not that interesting. It's not really a fine artwork. The cars if you would be there later and do longer exposure again with tripod you could get some kind of light rays it would also remove some of the people i think the fact that the sun is hidden behind the tree is interesting but not interesting enough there is these posters so just kind of um it could be done better i think artistically it's not that interesting even though technical part of composition are there artistically artistically it's not really working for me uh, post-processing I'm not sure about the white balance here I think the yellow looks a little bit too yellow let's have a look hmm. maybe with a little bit of tint it will remove a little bit of the green and if we push the yellow a little bit here maybe that would be helpful what about black and white uh, black and white is something what could also work I would open a little bit more of the shadows add contrast push the clarity and starting to be also quite interesting just something what you could do you know you could bring the attention to it with like a gradient and um, you could do a few more of those maybe a little bit here but not that much and then maybe add some uh, dodge and burn with a brush so something like this and again on the actual building and maybe bring the attention towards the water and here and then you could add a little bit of darker parts mm -hmm. something like this is also interesting um, just to kind of give you an idea what else you could do with it uh, this one um, the white balance seems fine I would definitely try to do something to close it a little bit more so maybe go for some more vignetting something like this um, I would lower the clarity to get a little bit more of the kind of dreamy effect especially on the water we don't want it to be too much details and get too high frequency details on it uh, again I would do some dodge and burn here so more brightness into the whiter parts of the photo and more darkness into the kind of darker parts something like this just to get more contrast again I think this picture would look really nicely actually in black and white uh, where you would push it around and but I already show you that and finally this one I think post-processing on this one is done well actually I think it's a nice exposure it's a lovely golden color together with the blue it's quite nicely done so 
uh, Evgeny, I hope this will help you. Thank you as always for all your comments, for all your messages. Uh, we're gonna keep moving forward. Your overall score again, number three. We need to keep pushing to get to the four, um, but please send us more pictures in the future. I can't wait to see them. And until then, please take care of yourself. Let's jump to the last photographer, and that will be Linda. Linda, I will be honest, Linda Murphy photography. Linda, I have seen your photos before, I'm sure. It was a boy. Let's have a look. Was it portrait? It was a boy with some kind of bow and if I am right, let's see if I can find it. Portrait. Linda Murphy. Yes. And my notes for these pictures were that they are well captured, but there is too much glow on them. So this is almost like your adventure hero a capture. Uh, looking really good with a bow and the boys having this kind of clothes and everything. And I think it would need a little bit more kind of, mm, how would you say, it would need a little bit more texture in them and make it more contrasty and more interesting where uh, they are just too glowy. He's just too pretty for the scene. Although he's a very good looking gentleman, I think it would be better if he would have uh, been a little bit more like a rumble or rocky, you know, that kind of finish. Uh, to get a little bit more out of it. I don't know, if, did we try last time in post-processing? Um, just more clarity and, and a heavier vignette and, you know, really something like this and uh, bring down the exposure in overall and really go with the brush and then bringing just the details with your brush to really make it work. You know, he has a lovely light on him. And here, here. Um, and yeah, just do something like this, you know, to, I mean, I'm going over to the top and super fast, but just to give you an idea, what would be my kind of take on it, I, what I would go for. Then again, make it a little darker on spots where it needs to be darker and just work on it on something like this. But that's not the pictures we were going to look at. Today we were going to look at pictures. Where are we? Here, Linda. Cool. So the first one, portrait and then we have a little bit of macro photography with this stunning capture of the bird here so let's talk on the first impression and first come first just to repeat again i repeat it every week i will have to write a little suggestion for when you're sending pictures for your reviews linda i think it's really important to realize that when you're sending your pictures for the review you want the person like me or any other photographer to really focus on your art and your photography you don't want their attention being taken away by logo frame signature or anything like this on a picture um I, I see this over and over and i think it's really shame because us as an artist as a photographer when i look at the picture um uh, you know when a human eye looking at the picture painting photo you we get automatically attracted by the brightest and whitest part of the photo so obviously when i look at it first attention going towards the logo i start to think artistic me i'm starting to think uh, is it nice? Do I like it? Do I not like it? Why this color? Why did you use this font? Uh, then I move to the frame. Why is it pink? Why is it not pink? Is it thick enough? And, and then after the, the whole process of this, I go to the picture. And instead of using the real first impression, I'm already... Did I like the logo? I will like your picture more likely. Did I not like the logo and frame? Maybe I will have already some kind of opinion. So really try to stay away from using these elements when you send your pictures for reviews it will help in the future. But first impression, love this one uh, where, um, look, w the reason why I talk about these pictures from before is because I wanted to bring it here. And here, the finish with the glow and with the smoothness works perfectly. And why? Because it's a lovely looking lady lying on this kind of, uh, it's like a farm or, uh, and it really works nicely here. I think uh, it's really natural looking, the, the happiness in the face and everything works really well here. So for this scene, really work. Nice, romantic, warm finish. Where on the other scene, more kind of contrast, um, adventure look. That's what I would be going for there. So my first impression, this one, love this one. First impression on this one, taking away your frame and uh, watermark, loving it. Oh my God, loving it, loving it. If I would have to choose, I would go... A square crop puff, and just go for something like this because I think it's just stunning stunning Linda uh, not much up there but 
let's do it step by step let's talk about your technical point of view technically well done let's have a look if we have a details of the camera we don't also uh, if you send us more pictures in the future send them in a little bit higher resolution it's always helpful we can see more of the details but just by looking at it it's all sharp the hand the face then it kind of go nicely with a nice depth of field to, towards the black the, towards the back of the picture uh, but there is still enough sharpness and details at the back so we don't lose complete touch with the person i think the light is nice it's nice and diffused uh with a golden feel the light again going straight to the face could you have created some more contrast uh, with different lights yes but then i'm assuming this was like in a live location outside so in overall this is lovely lovely on this one uh technically the bird is all in focus i really like that together with the flower well done on that uh, i think there is lovely bouquet done lovely separation done where you can still see the details i quite like that uh, um like i already mentioned several times when i was going through macro photography i'm starting to be really tired of these uh, gradient background blurry completely blurred background i think uh, the time is gone i think we want to be so much more so i think this really works for me i really like the fact that you can still recognize some of the flowers although they are still blur blurred enough to create nice contrast so technically well done great light great sharpness uh exposure right time of the day well done on that artistically out of the two i can't choose i, I love this one because i think it's great but this one is also really nicely done um i think yeah you could crop it around and see what would works better i mean again you know something like 3.2 and get a bit more of this because there is a lot of space outside of the lady but it's still working quite well uh, i think the message is clear i think it's a uh, yeah it's just well done it's a nice capture at the right time at the right place so well done on that one i already told you on this one i would go a little bit closer because it's really a celebration of the bird and the flower i think it really works there you want to make sure that you're leaving enough space of each side why am i going so close also another reason being that since everything is blurry here it doesn't really add us anything to it you could also you know kind of turn it around and maybe go for something like this because maybe this flower still give us like a little bit of extra of something but the rest it's not really meaningful for anything but that would be just me post processing this one is really nice you know i always like portrait when you edit them and you leave a little bit of natural feel in it i think over editing is a bit gone and uh, past and gone now but this looks really nice nice natural feel could you add a little bit of vignette just to close it a little bit more you could maybe just lower a little bit of the exposure and add just more kind of brightness uh, in a face that's way too much maybe something like this you know and this oh that's still way too much something like this and just kind of really work on it but otherwise well done and on this one same thing it's a little bit on the darker side but i think it's again the compression because when i look at the quality it's really low so uh for your own sake i think if you have them in bigger size for the future send them over because it's well done and based on these two pictures linda i'm gonna give you four i think both of them would be ready to be placed on a portfolio to start to show them to your clients to start to show them to your followers and people who like your photos because they both stunning i can't really add anything to them i haven't found technically anything wrong i think the composition is well done they are beautiful captures so linda four stars uh, only second four star in a history of our photography review show so thank you so much linda please send us more pictures in the future and if you want and you want to have more fun with the photography join us at our new facebook group clever photographer academy and uh, basically we talk about photography there giving help and reviewing more photos there throughout the week and it will be a lot of fun um and that goes to all of us guys please make sure that you like comment and follow us here at youtube or our facebook page if you want to join us make sure you head to cleverphotographer.com review where you can see the full schedule of our review shows you can see the links where you can upload your photos and you can find more information about me and about this whole photography review show guys thank you so much i hope to see you again next week and until then keep shooting